Greetings, Cyberdogs and citizens of the internet! This is Rendog coming at you from the Cyberdog Drive-In in this Let's Play Minecraft Survival Series. In the previous episode, we were setting up the Market Lane in Mole City. And in this episode, my friends, we are going to be finishing off the Cyberdog Drive-In Facility and Big Screen before heading back to Mole City to find some new employees to come and take their rightful places in preparation for the Cyberdog Drive-In Premiere. Sit back and relax, my friends, with your tasty-ass beverage and crunchy-ass snacks because it is time to play some Minecraft survival. Well, my friends from all over the world, as you can see, I have been one busy-ass cyberdog up in here, man. This week, I have been jamming Minecraft survival something fierce, my friends. And as you can see, I have finished off the cyberdog driving facility, and it is looking pimps McDaddy. Damn! Uh, I basically just used stone bricks, some delicious ass oak logs, and some spruce wood stairs as the primary blocks for this build. Added some glowstone here and there, and as you guys can see, I finished off the con confectionery stand too. Looks really, really awesome. Got some uh, stained glass in here, some red and white stained glass, just to make it look like a confectionery area. And of course, this is the Cyberdog colors over here too. So, can't wait, guys, to get a villager to come and take his rightful position as uh, the confectionery stand man or woman. And uh, that is one of our primary objectives for today, guys. We need to get three more employees from Mole City to come and work in the Cyberdog Drive. And I've also finished off the box office over here, guys, which, as you can see, looks really sweet. Again, going with a little bit of red and white, just to make it look kind of like a kind of jazzy, right? It kind of looks like a cinema. You know, whenever you go to a box office, there's a whole bunch of color and stuff around it, which looks really cool. Um, I've got some paintings here also that I want to experiment with. I kind of want to try and make like a um, like uh, you, you know like when you go and buy tickets at a box office there's always the posters or whatever for all the uh, the movies that are showing and in, in, in the background and I think that'd be pretty cool if we could get some sort of uh, like a collage of different pictures around here uh, just to sort of make this box office look like uh, you know it's actually a place where you would buy tickets for a cinema or whatever but uh, I'm gonna try and do that a bit off camera guys because as you can see it takes ages to get it done but got a bit of red carpet in here too which looks really cool and if we come around the corner this is the confectionery stand where we will be selling tasty ass beverages and crunchy ass snacks for the cyberdog drive-in premiere looks really sweet guys and uh, i'm going to be installing some iron doors in these positions too so the villagers will stay in the employees sh sorry the employees of the cyberdog drive-in will stay in their positions and not go wandering into the wilderness where they may be slain uh, if we go up here guys this is the projector room as you can see look and pretty sweet for some reason paintings can go straight through floors hope you fix it mojang slash minecraft um anyway guys uh this is where we're going to have the projector facility or the projector unit and i kind of have a sweet idea of what i'm gonna uh, how are we going to build the projector we're going to be using a dispenser a redstone lamp and a jukebox to make a, a projector uh, we're going to be doing that a little bit later in this episode but it's looking pretty sweet i must say man uh and i think i've also got another idea what i want to do is all of our excess records that are currently in the the lakeside villa uh, um the lakeside villa lounge i want to get them and stick them in this chest over here and i guess even though they're records they will be kind of representations of the movies uh, that could be stuck into the projector by the projectionist um, and yeah, I've just got a bit of light around here, a uh, few window panes every now and then, added a little, little bit of black wool to the surface of the tables around the projection area. I think that looks pretty awesome. And uh, yeah, this place is looking awesome. What I still need to do though is finish off the road that leads to the Cyberdog uh, driving facility and then also do a final bit of touches around here like getting these paintings up uh, on the wall and I also want to add a whole bunch of confectionery into the confectionery stand like cake uh, and what are you Cyberdog? dog suggested using some clay pots to for the for the uh, tasty ass beverages which i think is a really awesome idea and maybe we can add some chests also with some delicious stuff in them uh, so that when you go to the drive-in to watch the movie you can go and pick up your delicious ass snacks and beverages also what we need to do guys is in this in today's episode man it is a busy one today is lay a railway line all the way from mole city to the cyberdog drive-in so that we can transport our new employees all the way there uh, and what i've done is i've sort of set up a foundation for the railway line already and what i'm going to be doing is 
building a powered railway line that's going to follow this path all the way to the Cyberdog drive -in. And when we find the villages in Mole City to stick into the Cyberdog drive -in facility, we can then get them into minecarts and uh, basically put them to work. Now, I know that there are a few villages around here that will actually be perfect for this uh, these positions in the Cyberdog drive -in. And is this the one? Yes, this is the one that sells apples. Check it out. For emeralds, you get apples. So she looks like the perfect employee for the confectionery stand at the drive-in and uh, I guess there is another villager around here that has paper or something like that uh, is it this one is it the son of Griswold paper for emeralds or uh, books and emeralds for enchanted books I suppose hmm that doesn't work quite as well. I kind of want a villager that sells books for emeralds or sells paper for emeralds because that would be like the perfect villager uh, as the ticket master, right? Because you'd have to give them emeralds for a piece of paper or emeralds for a book. I suppose this one is kind of like that, but the wrong way around. Um, I don't think we actually have any more villagers around here that uh, can do that. But guys, I tell you what I'm going to do now. I'm going to isolate these villagers um, into minecarts. And once I've done that, I will bring you back on the other side of this Kaplayam where we will then send them to go and take up their rightful places as employees of the Cyberdog Driver. Kaplayam. It is my privilege to welcome the three of you to the Mole Mart Corporation family. Thank you so much for um, <clears throat> applying for the jobs and congratulations. May your time in the Mole Mart Corporation last. For the rest of your lives. <laughs> well, my friends, welcome back. Seems like we have caused a little bit of a kerfuffle around Mole City over here with regards to the uh, employment process of Mole Mart Corp. Some are saying that it's not exactly fair. Well, too bad. <laughs> Let me introduce you to the three new employees of the Cyberdog Drive-In Facility, my friends. First and foremost, we have the confectionery stand lady who gives us apples for emeralds. Next up, we have the box office man who gives you an emerald for 32 pieces of paper. I think this works quite nicely because the 32 pieces of paper are basically the numerous tickets that you get in the mail when you uh, buy a ticket for the Cyberdog Drive-In and the, the emerald is what you need to show when you go into the drive-in uh, itself and this over here guys is our projectionist the psychotic projectionist she actually gives emeralds for skin uh, and you know projectionists are always kind of a little bit weird in movies so I thought this would be actually a really nice fit this villager <laughs> I don't know what she's doing up there in the projection room skinning a whole bunch of I don't know um, animals and humans who knows what she's up to up there but as long as she gets those films blasting onto the big screen i do not mind uh but there we go guys those are going to be the three new employees of the cyberdog drive and next step for today's episode is to lay down the railway line to get them to their new positions now this before we do that guys the more astute of you might have noticed uh, at the beginning of this video that there are some weird sort of dirt bridges around Mole City at, at, uh, at the moment and that is because I was inspired by a comment made by one of you cyber dogs a few videos ago and one of you guys said that Mole City is looking really sweet but it's looking kind of concrete and it would be really awesome if, if we could get some more greenery around here. And what you suggested was changing the slabbage at the base of the trees in Mole City to grass. And I thought that that was such a good suggestion that I would try it out. So this is the old design over here. And the new design is going to look something like this. And when we get some bone meal, we'll be able to grow some grass and some flowers and whatnot around the base of the trees. And uh, that's just going to add a little bit more nature to Mole City, which I think is going to work really, really nicely. So thank you, Cyberdog, for that really, really awesome suggestion um, it's gonna take a little bit of a while for all of that grass to grow and once that is done uh, we'll be able to have a look at what it's gonna look like perhaps from the dogolith courtyard uh, or from the dogolith structure or from the uh, the giant lava ball we might be able to be able to have a really awesome view of that but um, we're just gonna let that grass cook and uh, get going with the next part of today's episode guys which is going to be to lay a railway line all the way from Mole City back to the Cyberdog drive-in uh, this railway line is gonna go all the way down here 
here and what I'm going to need to do is add some powered rails every now and then so that those mine carts are going to be able to get there automatically. Um, you know, I want to keep these villagers safe. I want them to be permanent employees of the Cyberdog Drive-In, but I also don't want them to die on the way there, you know. I mean, there is health and safety in, uh, in Mole City. We have a good health and safety track record, in fact. We have not lost any villagers to zombification or to the undead hordes as of yet, and uh, that's not going to happen on my watch, my friends. But uh, what I'm going to do, guys, is lay this railway line all the way there. I'll bring you back on the other side of this Kaplam once I've done it. Got to get some redstone torches and stuff uh, for these powered rails, too. So it's going to take me a, a bit of a while to do that. We will see you on the other side of this Kaplam. Kaplam! Oh, hello, sir. Welcome to the Cyberdog Drive-In. Can I get you a tasty-ass beverage and some crunchy-ass snacks for your viewing pleasure? Oh, what's that? You would like a tasty-ass zombie arm and a zombie brain cocktail? Well, give me one second. Coming right up. <laughs> oh, man. Welcome back, Cyberdogs. This is actually a really cool place to work. Check it out, man. You get to watch a free movie every single time uh, you come to work. That is, <laughs> This is awesome. Um, this is definitely the best out of the three jobs that we have here in the Cyberdog Drive-In. But guys, I've just spent the last 15 minutes or so laying down this railway line. And this is going to be the railway line that is going to be transporting three new employees for Molmart Corp and for the Cyberdog Drive-In. So let's just make sure this railway line is functioning correctly and we'll be able to transport our villagers there. And as you guys can see, it just follows the road and then it goes up on this path that I think we made in Season 1, right? All the way past uh, the farmlands over there and it's going to come around the corner and what i'm worried about is actually going over the top of this little um, entrance way over here into beatrice's courtyard but that has worked absolutely perfectly and back into mole city perfect okay great stuff so guys what we're going to do i think is send the villagers one at a time um, and the first villager that we'll send is the confectionery lady because uh, what we'll need to do is get her into her position in the confectionery stand and then seal her, her off with an iron door so that she doesn't run away. Uh, so why don't we get that done right now, guys? Let's just lay down the railway line like this. I think we'll probably have to add one more powered rail in this position so that she zooms off and sh as she touches it. And what I'm going to have to do also is break... Uh, hmm, I'm going to have to break it the, the railway line I think because I don't want the villagers to come and climb up these stairs to get out uh, old Griswold is probably getting really excited right now because this will be the first time that he'll be able to maybe get, look at him he's a red look at him he's a, talking to freaking Beatrice already man that guy will do anything it takes to get over to Beatrice there's definitely some sort of sordid affair going on between the two of them uh, it's been going on for the last three seasons my friends and it's it's just unacceptable it's unacceptable um, anyway, guys, let's do this thing, man. Let's get the confectionery lady into her position in the Cyberdog Drive. And there she goes. Zoom. We'll smell you later. And uh, what I think we'll do is just break it like this. Yeah, villagers can't jump, so they won't be able to follow her. Um, let's actually get into a minecart ourselves and head all the way back just to make sure that she gets there safe and sound. Uh, then we can sort of lock her in position. Um, <laughs> oh, man, this is so awesome. All right, here we go, my friends. She should be there. Yes, she is. The confectionery lady has taken her rightful position in the Cyberdog Drive-In facility. Looking good there, lady. Uh, what I am going to do, though, is get this iron fence in place now. So let's get this bad boy like this. Kaplam! There we go. The village is not going to be able to get out now. And uh, let's release her from her minecart jail. And there she, there she is, man. She is locked in. Sweet. Um, she's already not happy, you can see she's running around like crazy, but, um, excuse me, I would like a zombie brain cocktail and a tasty piece of cake, if you will. Yes, yes. Ah, uh, uh, thank you. <laughs> awesome. Alright guys, let's do exactly the same for the other two villagers. Oh, oh yes, oh hello there, yes. Um, I would like to buy one VIP ticket to the Cyberdog Drive-In Premiere, if you please. Ah, uh, thank you. <laughs> there we go, guys. We've got the second employee in. Look at him. He's actually looking kind of happy to be here, man. Although he is 100% trapped in there. He's looking he's looking kind of pleased with his new job. You know, I think it's getting kind of boring living in Mole City. There's not much to do uh, other than, you know, harvest every now and then. So that's pretty awesome. But anyway, guys, one more villager to go. Uh, so your favorite movie is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and you collect skin as a hobby. Uh-huh. 
I'm just gonna back up slowly, okay? You have fun projecting, we'll smell you later. Get me out of here! <laughs> Welcome back, my friends. I am so freaking happy, man. We've just managed to install the three employees of the Cyberdog Drive-In. They are safe and sound up in this building, and they are ready to work. And, uh, man, I'm just so stoked. That took actually quite a long time to get these villagers into their position. But they are now here, which means we can move on to the next part of today's build, guys. And that is going to be the projector, which is going to proje be projecting the premise movie onto the big screen over there right here in the Cyberdog Drive-In and uh, you guys gave me some pretty cool ideas on how to actually build this projector and what I've done is I've set up a, a tripod out of birch uh, fences which I think looks kind of cool and kind, kind of helps to differentiate it from the rest of the wood that we're using around here and the idea for this projector is as follows right a redstone lamp is going to be in this position this is what is going to be projecting the movie onto the big screen over there uh, I had to add a bit of slabbage over here to stop the projectionist from jumping out the freaking window. Uh, even though she is a psycho, I don't want her to, to end her life while the premiere is happening. Man, that would just be tragic. Uh, the next part of our projector, guys, is going to be a dispenser. And the dispenser is going to be uh, inserting the movie, so to speak, or the reel of the movie into the projecting device, which is then going to be projecting onto the screen over there. And the last part of the projection machine, my friends, is going to be a jukebox. And the jukebox is, of course, where we're going to be shoving in our movies, our DVDs, our CDs, whatever the uh, the actual method is of projecting. That is what that's going to look like and of course a lever is what we're going to use to turn this whole thing on now what we also need to do is get some trap doors up in here i think yeah i've got some trap doors over here and what we're going to need to do is add some trap door action to the projector device so that when uh the we turn on the projector the movie isn't projected onto the the walls and the roof of the projecting room over here you know we've got to try keep this a little bit realistic so let's add a couple bits of slabbage over here too just to uh, give this wooden trap or something to grip there we go okay awesome so i think that is how i want the projector to look that's looking pretty sweet actually let's just pick up our pickaxe to get rid of this uh, stone underneath the projector there we go okay so what i want to do now is when we flick this on we're going to be turning on the projector. Yes, that's sweet. All right, so check it out. There is our projector, guys. That's looking pretty awesome. And uh, when we turn it off, oh, there, check it out. When we turn it off, it actually lifts the lid over here. So uh, w this projector over here, this redstone lamp is going to get super hot, right? Because it's going to be projecting for like a, a whole five minutes. So when the movie is over, the projectionist just hits the lever and that sort of helps to cool down the whole thing. Uh, there we go, guys. I think that's awesome. <laughs> Check out the projector, man. That is sweet. And uh, yes, in one of these chests, we're going to be keeping the movies uh, that the projectionist is going to be using to project onto the big screen. Uh, but yes, guys, that's it, man. That is the projector room build. And we have got the villagers into the Cyberdog driving facility. So that is job done for this part of the episode. Absolutely freaking awesome. This basically means, guys, we are but a few days away from from the premiere of the Cyberdog Drive-In. So I hope you filmmakers out there uh, who haven't submitted your uh, films yet realize that there's just a few days to go now. So guys, get your films in before it's too late. Uh, and we are going to be premiering the very first Cyberdog Drive-In film in not a very long time from now. So make sure you guys are ready for it. All right, guys, anyway, let's have a look from here. Yes, you can see the projector over there. <laughs> oh, man, that is absolutely sweet. And uh, the next task for today's episode, guys, is to actually get uh, the big screen completed by adding a t in, basically a wall of white wool uh, that is going to become the big screen's screen area, I suppose. And all we're going to really need to do, though, is just build it like this all the way up. Now, I hope that I have enough wool for this. Um, I'm going to give it a go and see if we're going to need to go do a little bit more shearing. But guys, let me get on with this. It's going to be quite a tedious task. I will see you in a second. Compliant. All right, guys, just two layers to go. And I don't think I have enough wool to do this. I think we're going to be short by like five or something like that, man. Let's just hold thumbs and hope this is going to be enough. 
Oh my goodness, I don't think so guys. But you know what? It is so amazing that we are about to finish this build. This is just so epic. You know, there's nothing more satisfying in Minecraft survival than working on an absolutely giant build and finally, finally being able to finish it and bask in its glory, man. I am so excited about this, guys. Check it out. Oh man, you know what? I was actually really worried about the wooden beams in between um, the white wool texture of this texture pack, but I think it's actually turned out pretty awesome. Um, it really does look like a giant screen, doesn't it? Looks absolutely epic. Uh, right now, there's a, it still needs a, a top layer to finish it, but that is looking absolutely epic, guys. Look at that, man. Oh, that is awesome, man. Let's get up to the, the Psycho Projectionist room to have a look from there. I think that'll be a really cool view also. Let's have a look from up the, in, from this position over here. Oh, man, look at that. That is so cool. Uh, let me turn off the projection, act, the projector, actually, because that thing's going to burn out. But um, that is looking epic. And the Northern Star is, like, just above it also, which is just... I, I mean, I couldn't have asked for this build and this design to have come out better, guys. Absolutely epic. Look at that. Beautiful, man. All right, my friends, I have just finished adding the last of the white wool blocks to complete the big screen. And I think you guys will agree, it is looking absolutely fantastic. I love it, man. It's just so beautiful. I've also added a whole bunch of posters into the confectionery stand. You know, these are the posters for the movies that are currently showing on the big screen. And uh, there's a, a pin board where the, uh, the staff can come and, and put their, their shifts and whatnot. Um, I've also added some posters into the box office too, guys. So that's looking absolutely sweet. And I I am just, I'm just the happiest Cyberdog that there is right now because this build is looking absolutely amazing beyond my expectations and uh, I've just really enjoyed this one. It is beautiful and I just cannot wait to get one of your guys' movies onto this big screen. Premiere is coming up in a few days, guys, so prepare your freaking butts. I hope you guys have uh, paid your gold nuggets for the tickets because, damn, they were expensive, man. But yeah, next step for uh, Cyberdog Drive-In, guys, is to get all of the citizens of Mole City into the drive-in to, uh, to watch the premiere, basically, and we're going to take everyone. Paloma, the dogs, the Diablo, uh, Big Mac if we can. Everybody's going to the freaking drive-in, man. And uh, everyone's going to the premiere. It's going to be absolutely awesome. There's only one thing left to do for today's episode, though, guys. Because we've run out of time, unfortunately. And we are going all the way up the life tree on our way to the Dogolith Courtyard. Because it is time to add eight more of you cyber dogs to the Dogolith. Oh man, it always makes me so happy coming to the Dogolith to add you guys because, you know, it's just amazing how many of you out there are watching my videos and liking them and leaving constructive comments. And uh, I just love coming up here and getting your names on here. And guys, we've got eight more of you to add today, starting with Dogcraft.net users, Lethal Baconator, Spiky Doggy Dog, Kitty Mosh, and Smart Dog. Welcome to the Dogolith, my cyber dog friends. And now from YouTube, subscribe. We have got the Sassy Simmer winner, Grabby Jones and Elfie Facepalm. Welcome to the Dogolith, my friends. Thank you so much for your support. And you have been immortalized in the interbubs forever. And remember, my friends, if you want to stand a chance of being added to the Dogolith, you need to be a subscriber of the Ren Diggity Dog channel. And you need to leave me a constructive comment somewhere on my videos. I choose you guys randomly from my comments. There is also a thread on dogcraft.net, the official CyberDog fan community, where you can add your YouTube username and stand a chance of being added. Anyway, guys, I really hope you have enjoyed today's episode. Episode. It has been absolutely awesome. The Cyberdog Drive-In is rocking, baby. Almost ready for launch, and it is going to be an absolutely epic premiere night. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's been Ren Diggity Dog playing Minecraft Survival, and we will see you all in the next episode.